Throughout the history of man, the euphoria of victory and devastation of defeat have been felt in many ways. The fighting of wars is arguably the oldest and most prominent zero-sum game humans can play. Whatever is gained by one side is lost by the other. War, considered as sport to some, equals 333 in English ordinal. A warring and sporting both equal 46 in the reduction cipher. The elites playing God over the lives and lands of its inhabitants for their own illusions of grandeur. God equals 26 in English ordinal, while sports equals 26 in reduction. War heroes could be considered great sportsmen of their time. The symbolically sporty Theodore Roosevelt, who was the 26th American president, emphasis on 26, and the 33rd governor of New York before that said, aggressive fighting for the right is the noblest sport the world affords. So today, we will be looking at Teddy and how he shaped American society through the lens of sports and war, then look at two of the arguably best sportsmen of war from the past, Napoleon Bonaparte and his proclaimed idol, Hannibal Barca. All three men come from three completely different eras and backgrounds, but their gamesmanship in battle is what has separated them from the rest in the history books. But the uniqueness of Teddy Roosevelt is his incorporation of warfare into the psyche of traditional American sport. For Roosevelt, it was the Spanish-American War in 1898. Roosevelt staked his claim as a soldier versus the Spanish and then solidified his sporting legacy by saving America's most popular sport, which it still is today. Moving on to arguably the greatest war general of the last 500 years, Napoleon Bonaparte's military sportsmanship is second to none in the modern era. When studying Bonaparte, you will realize quickly he is extremely rare amongst the other top generals in history. In 43 battles, he won 38 and lost only 5. Napoleon overcame odds in 17 of his victories and commanded at a disadvantage in all 5 of his losses. No other general comes close to Napoleon in total battles and wars. Within this graphic, he is on the top right, alone with no one around him. Julius Caesar was the closest, but Caesar did not face many refined militaries under United Nations from his era. Most of his battles were against tribes from the countryside, the Gauls. Napoleon also had double the amount of official wars than Caesar. These were the biggest differences between the two. In sports terms, Napoleon had a much harder strength of schedule and played a lot more games. Which is why the 43 battles Bonaparte fought in and who he fought against solidifies him as the modern day war GOAT. GOAT equals 43 in English reduction. This transitions nicely to talking about his military idol, Hannibal Barca, who was also considered to be a master of his own myth when manipulating the citizens of outside lands owned by the ancient Roman Empire. Master propagandist equals 216 in English ordinal. The greatest war generals in history, birth date apart, equals 216 in English reduction. Hannibal Barca was born 247 BC and Napoleon Bonaparte was born August 15, 1769, which was very late in the year. Being that Hannibal's birth is only an approximation, the time span between the war hero's births could be around 2,016 years apart. With zero being a value placeholder, that can be seen as 216. When connecting modern comedic entertainment of the Dave Chappelle show with ancient history of Hannibal, there is an amazing cross of cultural symbolism. Hannibal was in Rome's house and he was saying, fuck your couch. Just says, why don't I stretch out? <laughs> and just started grinding mud on his couch, man. Yeah, I remember grinding my feet on Eddie's couch. You remember why you did it? Yeah, because Eddie could buy another one. <laughs> Yo, couch, nigga. <laughs> buy another one, you rich mother. <laughs> Yo, couch, nigga. Yo, couch. Darkness is. Darkness is. With as many problems and deaths Hannibal Barca caused for the Roman Empire during the Second Punic War, they respected him and saw him as a worthy and admirable adversary, ringing his name throughout their own history books to never forget the name. The saying Hannibal ad portas means Hannibal is at the gates, 
a refrain describing Hannibal's near conquest of Rome, was used to scare naughty Roman children for decades after his death. Even in his own time, Hannibal Barca left an indelible legacy. Roman generals like Scipio Africanus, who pardoned Hannibal after the Battle of Zama, respected him immensely. Scipio's studies of Hannibal's tactics influenced Roman military strategies for centuries. Prominent generals such as Napoleon acknowledged Hannibal as one of the greatest commanders in military history. Glory is promoted in loss when it comes to sports and war equals 222 in English reduction. They said another game, you niggas money! Join my Patreon today for only $5 to receive a monthly esoteric documentary on your favorite sports athletes and events. Real, raw, uncut, and uncensored without the limitations of YouTube. Join today to see the other side of the sports world.